Greetings, tea enthusiasts. I'm Dia Irby, former owner of the Bear York Tea Room Cafe and Gift Shop, and I'm here to share a few things about afternoon tea and the foods you'd want to serve. I'll share some recipes and show you some delicious pictures that will make you drool. I all of the recipes have come from my cookbook, A Dollar and a Pinch. That's backwards. I'm going to share <clears throat> my screen with you and we'll go through this together. Here we go. And go. It's strange how a teapot can represent at the same time the comforts of solitude and the pleasures of company. And right now during quarantine, we need solitude, but in a virtual tea party, we're able to have the pleasures of company. Now you want to plan your tea event, whether you are driving by and getting a tea to go from Sommelier's Roast or wanting to prepare your own food, this, is what you need to know. The first question is, what does having high tea mean? Does it mean drinking tea with dignitaries, a working man's meat and potato meal, or a three course meal of tea sandwiches, scones with curd and cream, fruit and tea sweets? Hmm, you might be surprised to know that high tea means a working man's meat and potato meal. It was called a high tea because it was served at a high bar. Afternoon tea that we consider a high tea was served at a low table. Therefore, it's either a, it's an afternoon tea and there are a couple of kinds of afternoon tea. Why was afternoon tea developed? Hmm, as a social hour for early colonists, Anna, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, experienced a sinking feeling. Or for tea plantation workers, take a break. You probably know this one. Anna, the seventh Duchess of Bedford, experienced a sinking feeling. Well, I would too if breakfast was early in the morning and the next meal was at nine at night. Your blood sugar drops and you have to have something to keep you going. So she would call her courtiers in and have tea and biscuits or cookies. And that is how afternoon tea developed. We can thank Anna for this treasure. What are the types of tea events? Well, basically there are four. There's a cream tea, which is, I'll explain, a light afternoon tea, a full afternoon tea, and if you're Irish, 11s is tea at 11. What about second breakfast? Every tea, no matter which one you choose, always features your favorite tea. Loose leaf or in a bag, a whole pot or just a cup. You have to have your favorite tea. Notice the drip catcher that's attached to my teapot. This was designed so that the tea wouldn't drip off the spout as you poured your tea, staining your valuable silk tablecloths. A cream tea is basically a pot of tea with a scone, maybe a little fruit, and always served with curd and cream or jam. These are some tea breads, almond poppy seed scones, and my homemade lemon curd, which is better than anything you'll eat from a store. And I'm sharing the recipe of that with you. Another picture of almond poppy seed and berries and cherries scones, which I'm also gonna share that recipe. A light afternoon tea might include more fruit, more bread, maybe one savory, which we'll talk about what that is, and maybe one sweet. It's, as the name sounds, just a light afternoon tea. 
And you can be creative with your teas. I would do a butterfly tea party at my restaurant. And obviously I used some butterfly cookie cutters. I created the little dessert butterfly by using vanilla chocolate coating to coat the pretzel wings. And I used a squirt of icing on a graham cracker to anchor the wings. And then if you notice, two little chow mein noodles to make the feelers. Present it the simplest food in the most magnificent way and you will have such an endearing time. Now let's talk about the full afternoon tea. There's an order to eat it and an order to tray it. On the first level, the first tray, you have your savories and your tea sandwiches. The second course is where your scones and your jam or curd and cream are, and that's where I put the fruit. And on the top is your a coup de grace, your sweets, yummy sweets. A typical full afternoon tea menu that I would serve would be on your savory tray, I would have mini frangos, mini quiches, tiny BLTs, and shrimp cups. In the middle tray, with your tea breads and fruit, maybe mini muffins, scones, sometimes banana bread, grapes, and strawberries. On the top, on this particular afternoon tea, we have mocha brigadeiras, filled dessert cannoli, lemon squares, and shortcakes. So filling, that's why it's called an afternoon, full afternoon tea. A shrimp cup, simply a phyllo pastry cup that's colored, which you can find in the holidays, with a sprig of drill, a dill in cream cheese, seasoned cream cheese, and then the shrimp and a slice of mini cucumber. Doesn't that look pretty? Prepare your food for the eyes as well as the mouth. These are many, this is a savory tray with the mini frangos, the Greek egg salad cups, and the cucumber sandwiches and veggie sandwiches. Mini frangos. Now the recipe I'm sharing with you is for a full size frango. You do exactly the same thing, only you don't put together two crescent pastries. You just use one and put the mix and roll it up. Greek egg salad cups, so simple and delicious. This goes in your pastry cups you can get at the freezer section in Walmart. And savories, tiny BLTs. These are ridiculously delicious and simple. The most challenging part about this is finding the party bread. It's usually only available during the holidays. And you maybe not able to see the size of the bread, but it's, this is a Roma tomato slice, if that gives you an idea about the size of the little slice. Now tea breads, I mentioned scones, and you can use banana bread, zucchini bread, yellow squash muffins, whatever is your, not as sweet as a cookie and not, I mean, and sweeter than a, a regular biscuit. Or maybe you can use biscuits. It's your tea party. You can eat what you want to. Here's a tray of our scones and fruit at a recent tea party I hosted. And now the sweet. This sweet is a cake. Yes, it's a cake. Everything except for the flowers the spout and the handle. I would make this for special events at the cafe for showers and receptions, birthday parties, anniversaries. But the last, the coup de gras, the top of the tier is sweets. And here's a tray of the uh, recent tea party I hosted with the mocha brigadeiras and the lemon squares and rum balls other sweets. The mocha brigadeiras is a recipe I learned in Brazil and it is 
It takes a while, but it is so simple and delicious. And if you don't like coffee, you can leave out the mocha part. Lemon squares. I got this recipe over 45 years ago, and it has been a favorite. Never failed. And they even freeze well. So maybe you want to make a batch of lemon squares and eat your tea party what you want and then freeze the rest in sections so you can have another tea party another day. Whatever you serve, enjoy it. Whether you're gathered with family right now or planning to have a, at the end of quarantine celebration, <laughs> lots of people, enjoy it. Teapots on, cups are waiting, favorite chairs anticipating. No matter what I have to do, my friend, there's always time for you. This is Dia Irby, former owner of the Baron York Tea Room Cafe and Gift Shop, and author of A Dollop and a Pinch. Have a good day.